In this video, we'll compare the performance and development experience between three graphics libraries, Pygame, Arcade, and Raylib, and for this comparison, we'll develop an appropriate benchmark. We will take a set of several sprites and do the following. With the mouse, we will generate a large number of these sprites, and for a greater load, these sprites will rotate and move within our screen, at the same time we will display the current frame rate and the number of sprites, and our task is to find out at what number of sprites each of the libraries will provide stable 60 frames per second. And I'd like to start with the well-known Pygame library, which, according to a recent poll on the channel, is by many the favorite graphics module for Python. It is a library built on top of the SDL library, so many of the functions run at the speed of C and assembly language, in addition to that you can use APIs such as OpenGL, Vulkan and Metal. It is easy to learn and the standard functionality is quite suitable for working with 2D graphics, it is cross-platform, there is good documentation and many examples in tutorials, and there are already a sufficient number of projects using Pygame on my channel. So, using pip you can easily install Pygame with the command presented on the screen, in the following information you can see the installed version of Python and the name of the development environment, as well as the characteristics of the hardware on which we will test. And now let's talk a little about the project structure for our benchmark. The project structure for each of the libraries will consist of instances of the sprite unit class, these are our sprites, which will be managed by an instance of the sprite handler class, which in turn is created from an instance of the application class. So, we need two files, let it be a file called pygametest, and a settings file that will be the same for all libraries. Here we will define the resolution value for the window, the path to the sprite folder and the font size for displaying the text. And then we will write a class for the main application, it will be a typical pygame class with methods for updating the state, drawing and checking events, all these methods are called in the main application loop, and in addition to this we will create a method for displaying the current frame rate. And besides, in this class we will track the delta time value, this is the time interval between frames. If we run the program, we will see a black window on which the current frame rate is displayed, and here it should be mentioned that all rendering in Pygame is carried out using the surface class, and our screen is now an instance of this class. Now, according to our structure, we will create a sprite unit class, here it is most convenient to inherit from the Pygame sprite class, and create a sprite handler class, here we will have access to the application instance, and the update and draw methods will also be needed. And then we create an instance of sprite handler in the application constructor, and call its appropriate methods. Let's check that everything works without errors, and continue to work on the benchmark. Let's now load our sprites, for this we will use the pathlib module, and create a load images method in which we will get the paths of all PNG sprites, and load them using Pygame. Then we load the sprites, and we need a sprite group to store them, and call the update and draw methods. And let's input parameters of the sprite unit class will be our handler and the position of the sprite on the screen, and we specify the sprite group in the super function. And here you can use a random generator that will generate a random index for us, and with the help of the index we will get the image itself. And since it is supposed to move the sprite, in the update method we will set the position of its rect. And then let's create our first sprite, which will be in the middle of the screen. Let's check and make sure that the sprite is displayed correctly, and now we can implement the movement of the sprite within the screen. To do this, let's define the speed variable with some value, write a method in which we get a random value, and use it to determine the velocity values for the x and y axes. To move the sprite, we will write the translate method in which we take into account the delta time value so that the value of the sprite's movement does not depend on the frame rate, and we will change the velocity values to the opposite when the sprite reaches the screen borders. Let's run the program and look at the movement of the sprite, and as we see the sprite changes its direction of movement when it reaches the screen borders, and now it remains to implement its rotation. To do this, we define attributes for the angle of the sprite and its rotation velocity, in a separate method we change the angle to the velocity value, while also taking into account the delta time value, and using the pygame methods we rotate the original image by the resulting angle. Let's look at the result, so we see the correct rotation and movement of the sprite on the screen, and we can say the main functionality of the benchmark is ready, we just need to add the ability to spawn a large number of such sprite instances, and we will do this with the mouse. To do this, we define a variable for the number of sprites added per click, and in the sprite handler class we add a method for adding sprites, which takes the position of the sprite as input, 
Here we add sprites to the self sprites list, and also implement a method for removing the same number of sprites from the sprite list and call the kill method. And we will call these methods by pressing the left and right mouse buttons using the on mouse press method. So, it remains for us to call this method when the mouse button is pressed, and in addition to this, we can display information about the number of sprites, and here we can say our benchmark is ready. And then we start testing the Pygame library, as you can see, when I press the left mouse button, I add sprites, and when I press the right button, they disappear. So let's find the number of sprites at which we will have a frame rate close to 60. And we see that as more sprites are added, the frame rate starts to drop dramatically, but so Pygame finishes this challenge with a result of about 450 sprites, and we will enter this result in the final standings. And this may seem like a small result to you, but the thing is that all sprites are instances of the surface class, and they are processed on the CPU side, and here it is the rotation of the sprites that causes a big drop in performance, and by the way, in this case, you can apply the following trick. So let's define a variable for the number of angles, and we can take a value less than 360. Then in the sprite handler class, we can write a method with which we will get a cache of rotated images, that is, for each sprite we will rotate and save images, and their rotations are evenly distributed on 360 degrees, and the number of such images is equal to the value of num angles. And then, based on the current angle of the sprite, we just have to take the appropriate image from the cache. Let's see how this affects the final result. And this is, so to speak, an old school trick, but for which nothing prevents us from using it. The only negative is the greater consumption of the amount of RAM, but in the end our result increases to 1100 sprites, which is almost two and a half times more than the previous result, and we will write this value in a separate line in the comparative table of results. So, in our comparison, only the Pygame library participated, and we got two results of using it, and as you can see, I made a note for CPU in order to show you in this video the use of GPU capabilities for Pygame, but more on that later, and let's move on now to the next library, and we will do it much faster since our classes for sprites will not change much. Let's take a look at the arcade library, this library is built on top of the lower level Pyglet library, which by itself means using OpenGL for graphics rendering, and Arcade and Pyglet are most likely comparable in speed to each other. But Arcade has a huge and convenient functionality for working with 2D games, there are several built-in physics engines, there is a good functionality for calculating sprite collisions, we can implement beautiful special effects and lighting in games using shaders, and in my opinion there is everything you need to development of excellent 2D games, but perhaps the level of entry will be higher than in Pygame. So, as far as Arcade is concerned, let's look at how to create an application class. To do this, we need to inherit from the window class, and when calling the super function, pass the window resolution value, and if you want, you can center it on the screen. And let's say we need to know the value of delta time, then we can get it through the onUpdate method, and in the draw method we clear the frame buffer. And when you have created an instance of this class, you need to call the run method. And as you can see, it's quite simple to create an application class, but let's implement the rendering of the current frame rate. To do this, we need to create an instance of the text class, for which we will specify its position on the screen, font size and text color. Let's create a draw FPS method where, for the text attribute, we calculate the frame rate as the reciprocal of delta time, and then call the draw method on that instance. So now we see the frame rate being rendered, and initially its target value is set to 60, and here you can see that, unlike Pygame, the origin in Arcade is in the lower left corner. Okay this was a mini introduction to Arcade, and let's take a look at the finished implementation of our benchmark for this library. So let's look at the nuances that had to be applied using Arcade, in the Sprite Handler class, for efficient rendering of sprites, an instance of the Sprite List class is used, for which the update and draw methods are also called. Arcade also has an abstract sprite class from which we inherit, and instead of the image attribute, the self-texture attribute is used, and so-called rects are not used here as in Pygame, but for this an attribute is used for the position of the center of the sprite. As you can see, the changes have taken place only according to the peculiarities of using this library, and now let's start testing it. And as you can see, the number of sprites has already exceeded the results of the cached version of Pygame, and a stable 60 frames per second can be obtained with 3200 sprites, 
this is an excellent result. And thus the arcade library breaks into first place. Although when using the GPU, I assumed that the results would be much better, but our comparison is not over, and let's look at one more library. So, the Raylib library is a fairly popular tool for working with 2D and 3D graphics in C and C++, this library is incredibly easy to learn and has a fairly huge set of all kinds of useful tools, it is cross-platform, and Python has its own bindings. Unfortunately, for Python there is only API to Raylib, so most of the examples and documentation will have to be studied for the C and C++ languages, but let's see if it really is that simple. And let's also look at how to create an application class for Raylib. Here we need to initialize the window with the parameters of its resolution and title, in the update method we get the value of delta time, and in the draw method, in addition to clearing the frame buffer, we need to specify the beginning and end of drawing, then the main program loop follows with calling these methods and window deinitialization. And as you can see, there is nothing complicated here in creating an application window. And in order to display the current frame rate, for this there is an appropriate draw FPS function, in which we pass the position on the screen as input. So, as you can see the origin of the coordinate system here in the upper left corner like in Pygame, and the introduction to Raylib we will end here, and then let's look at the finished implementation of the benchmark. In Raylib, I did not find a specific group or sprite list as in previous libraries, so all sprites are in a regular list, so you have to iterate over it and call the update and draw methods on each instance. And here there is also no abstract class for working with sprites, but again, all the code remains the same except for the draw method, According to the API, I used the appropriate sprite rendering function, taking into account its rotation and movement. And it's time to run the benchmark for the Raylib library. And as we can see the result is very close to the result of Arcade, in fact I ran the test several times and got about the same, so Raylib ends this test with a final result of 3300 sprites. Well. We can now evaluate the work of the considered libraries and take stock, but I discovered a way to use the GPU using Pygame. According to the documentation, this functionality is still under development, but we can test it and let's definitely do it. I won't go into details as this API is subject to change, but you need to work with four classes, window, renderer, texture and image. And if you look at the current implementation, then again the whole code remains almost unchanged, we can even use the sprite group and all the functionality associated with sprites up to collision detection. And so let's check what result can be obtained using this functionality. And by increasing the number of sprites, we can see that we have already broken the previous records of other libraries, and we managed to get a stable 60 frames per second with 5100 sprites. This is an unexpected and amazing result. And it is obvious that it remains only to wait for the final release of this functionality in order to fully use it. So we can see the final table of results, where Pygame was a pleasant surprise with the ability to use the power of the GPU, this result is more than 11 times faster than the CPU version. But let's not stop there, and now is the perfect time to test out the 3.11 version of Python, which has implemented some just-in-time compilation to improve overall performance. I'll test it behind the scenes and just show the results. So in the right column you can see the results of the benchmark obtained on the version of Python 3.11, and there is something to pay attention to here. And as you can see, the performance increase was from 10 to 30%, again, the strongest increase occurred in the case of Pygame GPU, and to be honest, these are significant reasons to switch to a new version of Python. So all libraries have their advantages and disadvantages, I'm planning to use Raylib for projects with 3D graphics and get to know the arcade library in more detail. So leave your thoughts on this testing in the comments, it will be quite interesting to read them.